Here, I want to highlight the fact that non-covalent interactions, like the millions of H bonds between strands in DNA, can form within and between different molecules, creating very stable shapes. We saw this in the three-dimensional structure of polypeptides, represented by the cartoon on the left, and in the folding of a single strand of RNA, represented by the drawing on the right. Given the huge number of hydrogen bonds or other non-covalent interactions within and between large, that is to say, macromolecules, it really shouldn't come as a surprise that there are alternate possible interactions and alternate ways of folding a molecule, and therefore, in fact, isomeric shapes that could form. The cartoon here illustrates the concept of one more stable shape, or set of non-covalent interactions, accumulating in a cell or in a test tube among many less stable ones that fold or unfold due to thermal motion. The more stable molecular interactions are the specific ones. It's the specific interactions that lead to appropriate or correct biological function. Here, a, B, C, and D are generic macromolecules. The A, B, and A, C interactions involve only a few bonds, in part because the shapes of the interacting molecules are not very fitted or, we say, complementary. But check out the good fit in the shapes of molecules A and D. The complementary shapes permit a close approach of the two molecules to each other, maximizing the possibility for mutual attraction for example by H-bonding or the attraction of opposite full or partial charges. The AD interaction is strong and more able to withstand the thermal motion expected at cellular temperatures because the strength of the multiple bonds is in fact additive. We say then that the AD interactions are specific while the weaker AB and AC interactions are nonspecific. Specific interactions, such as those cartooned here, are responsible for the precision of enzyme catalysis, hormone function, and even structures of and within cells. Strength in numbers. Let's follow the assembly of rough endoplasmic reticulum in this slide as an example of productive macromolecular interactions. First, of course, monomeric subunits like the amino acids here and nucleotides are polymerized in dehydration synthesis reactions to form polymers that fold into specific shapes. The resulting polypeptides and RNAs bind specifically to each other, actually in a very precise order, to form ribosomal subunits in an active macromolecular assembly. The ribosomal subunits meet up with an RNA molecule and start making polypeptides, and some of these attach to internal cellular membranes to form the rough endoplasmic reticulum yet another act of macromolecular assembly. Again, the point here is that many large cellular structures form specifically in this way.